the U.S. Armed Force furtively tried growth-causing chemicals on accidental regular folks in Winnipeg and Alberta amid the Cold War. The Canadian occupants were advised the trial was to set up smoke screens that the Army could convey to shield the U.S. from a potential atomic attack by Russia at the time. The reality of the situation was that they were trying organic operators on the clueless populace and hurting their well-being. The tests were connected to weaponry including radioactive fixings intended to assault the Soviet Union, as indicated by order archives uncovered in another book Behind the Fog, how the U.S. Cold War radiological weapons program exposed innocent Americans by Lisa Martino Taylor. Neighborhood governments were bolstered a main story by the Pentagon about the radiological weapons tests as per the reports. Dissident Post Reports the occurrences happened between July 9, 1953 and August 1, 1953 when they splashed 6 kilograms of zinc cadmium sulfide onto clueless nationals of Winnipeg from U.S. Armed Force planes. The Army at that point returned 11 years after the fact in 1964 and rehashed the investigations in different parts of Canada including Suffield, Alta. What's more, Medicine Hat, Alta, as indicated by Martino Taylor. National Post announced. In Winnipeg, they said they were trying what they described as a concoction haze to secure Winnipeg in case of a Russian assault, Martino Taylor said. They described it as a protective report when it was really a hostile investigation. Canada intentionally took an interest in this trial as a feature of an ascension it held with the U.S. also, England yet was purportedly not told about what was being showered on its subjects, as per Martino Taylor. In 1964, a notice from Canadian authorities communicated worry that an American flying machine was emanating unmistakably obvious discharges, Martino Taylor said. In Canadian and U.S. records, the tests were referenced as organic and concoction when reports proposed they really included consolidating the two with radiological segments to frame a joint weapon. The U.S. was taking a shot at creating a radioactive nerve operator that consolidated the hazardous phosphorus-32 and VX substance mixes. The zinc-cadmium sulfide went about as a fluorescent tracer which would help the U.S. armed force decide how the radioactive aftermath from a weapon utilized on the Soviets would go through breeze streams, Martino Taylor said. An extra 1964 update from Suffield notices that the U.S. Armed Force needed to set out Suffield to talk about the utilization of radioactive tracer procedures in synthetic weapons trials. While getting ready for different tests including BG, a microbes, the U.S. Armed Force drafted the quantity of healing centers and doctors' facility beds accessible in the zone, demonstrating a potential further association with the CIA's human experimentation MK Ultra venture. It's a well-established certainty the Allen Memorial Institute and Royal Victoria Hospital is viewed as the support of present-day torment, and that Scottish-conceived Dr. Donald Ewan Cameron was intensely associated with Subproject 68. Cameron additionally had halfway financing channeled by the CIA, approximately $62,000, and the Canadian government for its mentally programming examinations and torment, as per the McGill Daily. So was the U.S. anticipating growing its dormant tests into Suffield. For a considerable length of time the gigantic Suffield base in Alberta was one of the biggest substance and natural weapons inquire about focuses on the planet. A 1989 Peace magazine article clarified, for right around 50 years, researchers from the Department of National Defense have been as occupied as beavers extending their insight into, and testers for, concoction and natural fighting. CBW, in southern Alberta, Global Research announced. The U.S. was exceptionally forceful, Martino Taylor said. Canada appeared to be less on board as I read through the documentation. As of not long ago it was thought the U.S. just investigated its own kin, yet it's presently realized that they additionally probed their neighbors in Canada and attempted to grow that experimentation to the levels it did in the U.S. The CIA did a few dishonest human analyzes in the United States. In one occurrence they infused radioactive material into clinic patients without their assent by any means. While different tests were performed on pregnant ladies in Nashville who were given a radioactive iron mix drink to ingest with the goal that analysts could decide whether malignancy could be passed on to their posterity. Indeed, 
even youngsters were sustained radioactive oats as a component of a science club, Martino Taylor said. Indeed, this is your mystery history of past profound state tests. Another by the U.S. Armed Force inside the mainland United States uncovered by Martino Taylor additionally included showering a similar zinc cadmium sulfide particles over a great part of the U.S. over a few urban communities including St. Louis and Texas, that task was known as Operation Lack, Large Area Coverage. People in general was deceived and advised the analysis was to set up smoke screens that the Army could convey to shield the U.S. from any atomic strike by Russia at the time. In all actuality, they were trying organic operators on the populace hurting their well-being. The examination was shrouded on purpose. They didn't have volunteers venturing up and saying better believe it, I'll inhale zinc cadmium sulfide with radioactive particles, St. Louis professor. Martino Taylor told KSDK. This was an infringement of every single therapeutic ethic, every global code, and the military's own particular arrangement around then. The report didn't note whether the investigations in Canada were associated with Operation Lack, however it has a few likenesses to the undertaking, or whether this was a greater piece of Project 112. In any case, for quite a long time the Canadian government has denied that it tried any bio weapons in Alaska and Alberta and also showering reproduced bioweaponry crosswise over North American urban communities, including Winnipeg.